What is going on you guys and welcome back to your channel today we are back on the youtube grind um well for a little bit at least while the beta persists i know i've been away guys i know that i've been getting harped on to make youtube content and stuff and truth be told the reason that i haven't over the last year is vanguard was essentially impossible to make enjoyable content on for you guys and for myself um it was just not the outlet that i really needed in order to make content that i would be proud of or content that i even wanted to put out uh, on YouTube. Streaming is a whole different thing, but in order to really sit down and enjoy making content and enjoy making long form videos for you guys that require somewhat a level of effort, um, it just wasn't there with Vanguard. Um, so I'm hoping Modern Warfare 2 is different. I'm hoping this is a new page on the YouTube channel, but today um, I decided to try something that I haven't really done before. Um, typically within the Call of Duty community, you will have, you know, games come out, you'll have uh, settings change, you'll have meta things, um, and there'll be videos, you know, eight minute videos, you know, this is the best gun, this is the best perk, these are the best settings. I'm gonna give you guys one video that you can watch for yourself, recommend to your friends. It's gonna be a one-stop shop for all things Modern Warfare that you're going to need. I'm gonna cover pretty much everything in the game today. Uh, there'll be timestamps throughout the video if you're just here for certain settings. Um, and make sure you guys, you know, at least look through the video for a little bit. Might be some stuff in here that you didn't know about. Uh, I'm gonna give you my favorite weapons so far in the beta. Uh, and the reason that I'm making this video now, as opposed to waiting for the game to come out, is obviously the only thing that really changes when the game comes out is the things that are able to be unlocked. Typically in betas, developers don't really change that much in terms of like actual gameplay. Um, so I think now would be a good time to make it. I'm going to go through every single setting with you guys. I'm going to go through everything in the game that I possibly can. This video is going to be pretty lengthy. So again, if you're here for one thing and one thing only, just going to be timestamps. Uh, or if you're here just to get classes and settings and all that kind of stuff, it's a great spot to be. So appreciate you guys for watching. Hopefully this is the start of a new chapter on YouTube that actually lasts and hopefully Modern Warfare can give us some good content. So appreciate you guys for watching and let's get started. Okay guys, like I said, I'm gonna be going through every single setting. So if you guys are only here for settings, Welcome aboard. Um, I'm going to go through everything in the game. I'm going to explain what is critical to change and what is really up to you. Um, what you want to do based on your PC you have. If you have, you know, a 3090 Ti and if you have like a 2080 Ti. Uh, if you want your game to look incredible. If you want it to run more proficiently. All these kinds of things. So I'm going to go through as much as I can in these settings. Try to talk as broadly as I can. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, at the first, you know, first glance, quick settings. These are things that you're going to want to change right away if you're playing on controller or if you're playing on mouse and keyboard. If you're here for mouse and keyboard settings, that's probably the thing I'm not going to be able to cover, uh, unfortunately. But these are, like I said, just really quick settings that you're going to want to change before you go super in depth. So you're changing your sensitivity, whatever you normally play on. I always play on a little bit of a higher sensitivity. So we're going to go seven. Your display mode is pretty big here because your FPS that you can get can change depending on what display mode you actually play on. Full screen tends to give you the best. Uh, full screen borderless can be good you'll get a little bit of a drop instead of like say 250 you'll get like 200 220 in that area so you always want to play on full screen for maximum performance um your camera and stuff like that you can get into as we go through the settings but this is just a quick fix i play on 100 fov so moving into your controller settings guys you have your button layout i play on tactical which means i just slide with my joystick i play flipped as well which means i shoot with bumpers instead of triggers uh your stick layout preset that's just like if you changed like their button layout this is all personal preference stuff this isn't really anything that i need to get into uh too much here um sensitivity like i had mentioned sensitivity multipliers and your ads sensitivity multiplier i did not touch uh, i think these are things that if you want to get super in depth with controller i don't think it's necessary if you want to mess with it go for it but i just leave these completely untouched i just left all that stuff untouched for the sake of simplicity uh, same with the vertical aim axis and all that stuff. It just may like if you're messing with that, then you're you're just you're down bad. Most of these settings I don't touch for the most part. If you want to have like auto tax sprint on, you can change that. I don't play with it because it's GA amongst pros, so I don't want to play with it in the beta, obviously. Um, you have your equipment, all that kind of stuff here. Your plates, we're not playing Warzone, so it's irrelevant. Um, moving into target aim assist here, I play on black ops. Now, this is more of a personal preference thing. I prefer Black Ops. Um, a lot of people say that it's pretty strong in terms of aim assist and like really good for snapping. That's what I've played on for the last two years. So it's just what I'm used to at this point. Feel free to mess around. Most people play on default or Black Ops. I think precision and focusing aren't really super prevalent. But like I said, if you play on them, go for it. Aim response curve is on dynamic. Uh, dynamic gaming, that's just the way 
Call of Duty is. If you're not on dynamic, you're kind of trolling. Uh, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. Your dead zones. Now, th the dead zone thing is controller dependent. So this is something I can't really tell you. My controller, I, it's relatively new, so I don't have to worry about the dead zones or anything like that. It, they don't really feel too bad in terms of aiming. If you have a controller that has either stick drift or if it's relatively old, that's where dead zones can start to play a part. Um, typically here, you want to play on a little bit lower if you start to notice stick drift and stuff like that. If you lower it to like one and spawn in, you'll immediately start getting slow turn. Like that's when you can bump it up slowly to, to get that sweet spot. Like I said, mine, I haven't had to mess with because I've had no issues. So again, just low, my recommendation here would be lower both your left stick and right stick to zero or one, and then start to mess with it until it feels good when you're in game. The movement behaviors, um, this is again, all personal preference. I hate to keep saying it, but there's only a few like absolutely crucial settings that you need to change. And the majority of them are, like I said, just personal preference on what you want to do here. Here's mine. If you guys care, I haven't really messed with any of this stuff for the most part. Um, there's nothing too important in here, I would say. You want to play on full screen just to get the maximum FPS that you can here. I have a 3070 Ti in my PC, so these are just my settings. If you guys have one, feel free to copy, or if you have something a little bit higher or lower, um, you can adjust accordingly. Obviously, you want to play on 1920 by 1080 res. You want to make sure you're playing on 240 hertz. That is big. If you don't have a 240 hertz monitor, ignore. Um, the rest of this stuff I have on off with V-Syncs. You make sure you want to go have those off. One big thing here um, that's more so an Infinity Ward thing than it is another developer is there's a lot of menu skipping and like um, just quality of life, like how the game feels when you're in the menu and out of game. What I typically do is lower my frame rate when I'm in the menu to make sure that I'm not trying to pull 300 FPS when I'm, you know, changing classes and stuff. It does help a little bit. Um, so make sure you lower that to like 60 or 30 or whatever you're comfortable with. Obviously, you can max out like while you're in game. That's fine. Um, Moving into the rest of the stuff, I, again, haven't really touched any of this. I don't think it's really necessary. Um, a lot of the stuff in this game, if you want to make it look pretty, go for it. But I'm more on the performance side than uh, how everything looks for the most part. Now, moving into the quality portion of your graphics, these are some things that you're definitely going to want to change. Render resolution, 1 million percent you want on 100. Anything above 100 is cool. I think 100 is great. Fidelity cast, you want on and you want on 100. This just makes your game look incredibly sharp makes it look great. If it's off, your game will look grainy. It'll look like everything is kind of mudded out a little bit. Make sure you guys have Fidelity Cast on 100. If you do not, big 10 out of 10 recommendation there. And the rest of this stuff is kind of dependent on your graphics card and how your game wants to look. I, again, am going for performance here. I don't really give a shit how my game looks for the most part. So that's kind of why I have everything on low or normal. Nothing on like ultra settings or anything crazy there. Um, shadows, I do typically keep on high because there are certain spots in the game where shadows can give away positions. So I always make sure to leave that setting on. Um, for the rest of the stuff, it's it's pretty much off. Make sure you guys have motion blur off, world and weapon, as well as your film grain on zero. That is another crucial setting you need to change or your game will look grainy, no pun intended. It's just how the game looks. Uh, moving into field, 100 FOV. Uh, most pro players are on between 95 to 105. This is um, dead center. Um, feel free to change it and adjust how you will. I'm also on affected as opposed to independent. The only difference here is affected. Um, it's not going to change your FOV that much when you aim down sight, whereas independent, uh, say if I'm playing on 100, it'll probably be reduced to around 70 to 60. Uh, and when I'm on affected, it'll be between like 80 to 90. So... Uh, it depends on pretty much how far you want to aim down sight. I would recommend Affected. I think just Affected feels great for the most part. Um, here's another setting that you're going to want to change as well, similar to camera bobbing last year. If you guys change that as your first person camera movement, it did the exact same thing. Uh, as the description says, if you don't want to get motion sickness while moving around in first person, uh, this is something you just want to reduce as much as you can. The minimum is 50, so that's where I have it right now. Uh, moving into audio, home theater is great. What you want to do if you want to get the maximum potential for footsteps, which are just absolutely ludicrous in this game. You're going to go for headphones or headphones bass boost. It's completely up to you. I play on home theater just because I'm sitting at home and don't need to, you know, sound horse super crazy. But these two are definitely the go-to if you guys want to uh, to sweat your ass off a little bit. This is just volume stuff. We don't care about any of that. Voice chat, don't care about any of this. Now, moving into your interface options, this is where you can change things like your HUD, your text, your uh, if you're colorblind, all that kind of stuff. The only thing that is really crucial, I would say, in here is to lower your HUD so you don't have to look to the corner of your screen for your minimap. I play on 40. Uh, I think anything below like 45, 50 is a good spot to be. I think like the sweet spot is 40, 30 in that area. 
Um, and the one thing I will say here is to change your minimap to a square. It just provides more um, vision on your minimap as opposed to a circle. That's really the only reasoning there. Um, and that's pretty much the rest of the things in here. I haven't really messed with any of this. This is stuff that I don't really care about for the most part. So, and that is pretty much it for my settings. Again, guys, feel free to, to go through and mess about and toggle as much as you want. Uh, the main thing I would say in here is your dead zones. It's very controller dependent. So make sure you guys, one, have your controllers overclocked and two, just mix and match, figure out what dead zones work for you. Again, I would start at zero and work your way up until basically you stop getting slow turned. All right, now we're going to get in game a little bit. We're going to talk about loadouts. We're going to talk about how to unlock weapons. We're going to talk about perks, kill streaks, the entire nine that you guys are going to want to know about. So we're going to start off with the question that I probably have gotten the most is how to unlock the MP5. How do I get this gun? Everything is locked. I don't understand. The new system is confusing, which I understand. I, I, I get that part. So uh, long story short, in order to unlock the MP5, you need to be level 16 and just base like in game, you need to be level 16. And then once you hit that, you'll unlock the Lockman 762 battle rifle. And you need to use this gun until it's about, I want to say level 12. You don't have to max it. I think it's about level 12. Um, and then you will unlock the uh, Lackman 556 and then you use this gun again up to about level 12 level 13 uh, I don't remember the exact number but you level it up until you get the mp5 and that's it it's a little complicated uh, but I'll dive into some classes and I'll show you guys how you understand the progression of your receivers on your guns and how you unlock things and stuff like that so the new system that infinity ward implemented if you guys are unaware are things called receivers and this just essentially means that attachments have become uh game wide as opposed to gun dependent so if i were to go let's use a class that i don't really mess with that much uh let's use the hurricane for example so i'm gonna go over here to the lackman 556 i'm gonna go into my gunsmith here and i'm gonna go to my receiver and now these are all of the guns that i can unlock attachments for by using this specific receiver there's five different guns and this works for every gun there's you know gun categories for every gun and different receivers and stuff like that and in order to figure out what guns you need to use in order to unlock other guns which is the most I think confusing thing for a lot of new players is pretty simple. You go to your gunsmith and you go to progression. And this shows you how to unlock your guns for different categories and different receivers. You can only see your guns within that specific receiver set. So like I said, as I mentioned, when I go here to the receiver on the gunsmith of the Lockman 556 here, I go over here, there's these five. Now, if I were to go to my progression, it's the same five and it just shows me how do I unlock them. And this goes, you know, if it, let's use a different gun, for example, let's go to the M4. Um, we'll go here and the receivers. These are the different guns that are attached to the M4 that I can unlock attachments for as I move on. So here we go. We'll pull over to progression and this shows you how to unlock those weapons. Say to unlock the FTAC recon, for example, I would have to use the M4. In order to unlock the FSS hurricane, I would have to use the recon. In order to unlock the Icarus and the M16, I would have to use it and vice versa. So that's how you figure it out. Um, it's not some like GTA cheat code. You don't have to just guess and play the game. Um, some weapons are unlocked via we uh, level, excuse me, such as the uh, the first Lackman uh, battle rifle. But as you get that and you unlock it, then you can go see what weapons you need to use and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now we're going to get into the actual classes. I'm going to give you guys some loadouts. So we're going to go through some of my favorite classes in the beta so far, my favorite guns and guns that I think you guys should be trying out. So number one is going to be the AR version of the mp5 and the mp5 itself i think that the m4 is really good uh, i will recommend it later in the video but i think that the lackman 556 which is the again the mp5 ar is the best ar right now that is accessible um it's definitely my favorite weapon that i've used so far i don't count the 74u as an ar because it is probably the best gun in the game or the best feeling gun in the game i could say um but it's not an ar so i'm not going to put it in here um so we have like i said the lackman 556 or the mp5 ar version here's the class feel free to throw a red dot on it if you want to i prefer the iron sight i think the iron sight just feels pretty good to run around with um and i've been playtesting this for i want to say like six or seven hours at this point i have game time uh, and this is the best thing that I have come up with so far. Now, granted, I don't have every attachment in the game unlocked for it. So um, say, you know, I don't have every stock. I don't have every rear. Oh, I do have every rear grip. I don't have every under barrel, um, which some of them are classified. Some of them you unlock via your receivers for other guns. So you have to use those other guns in your category to unlock attachments for and vice versa. Um, so I don't have everything unlocked, but I think even with everything unlocked, I think this is probably still the class that I would go with. Um, I think that these just this gun just feels the best and it's really good to shoot at range as well which is something I think the M4 kind of lacks uh, which I'll touch on as we move on um, so that's number one number two I said was the MP5 which is here we go 
um, if you guys are curious on the class here. Now, the MP5 is the, probably the second best sub, I would say. The 74U just blows it out of the water. I think the 74U is probably the best gun right now. Uh, you, you don't even get attachments for the damn thing, and it's the best. So that kind of says all that you need to say. Um, the MP5, though, is a ton of fun. If you guys put on no stock, you pretty much just fly around the map. Uh, it has great recoil control, great mobility, um, and it's a ton of fun to use. So if you guys have the MP5 unlocked and you want your class, here you go. Like I said, I'm not going to dive too far in depth here. I'm just going to try to go through uh, the guns as much as I can for you guys. Um, next up, we have the M4. And I really, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what M4 class I want to go with. Um, I think this is probably the one that has felt the best for me so far. Uh, if you guys remember the, like the Corvus no stock M4 from Modern Warfare, it kind of feels similar to that. But the only thing, the only gripe that I really have with the M4 is that at range it doesn't feel that great um the visibility isn't super high and the recoil is pretty rough but maybe that's just because the class that i have here isn't ideal or isn't the best but i feel like i've used pretty much every attachment that i can put together um and this one just seems to be the best of the worst i think again the uh the 556 just feels better than the m4 does if you guys want an m4 class obviously feel free to take this one. But um, as I mentioned, I would recommend the 5.56 definitely over the M4. And then moving into 74U, there's no attachments, no ex explanation required, just use the gun. <laughs> um, and then last but not least, which I'll go ahead, I don't have a class for, which I will make right now, is the FSS Hurricane, which I think is probably the second or third favorite sub. Um, it feels really good to use. It's a ton of fun, very fast, maybe very mobile, uh, shoots super straight. So uh, hurricane attachments, we're going to go with the no barrel because we're not pussy. Um, we're going to do the shark fin grip. We're going to run the phantom grip in the back. We're going to do the quicksilver demo. We're going to put on a laser sight and then you guys can use a red dot if you prefer. I'm always an iron sight any kind of guy. And then last but not least, we have the razor compensator. So this is my hurricane class shoot super straight, run super quick. Feels very good, very fluid. Um, and that's pretty much it for primary weapons. Uh, I will get into perk packages and field upgrades and all that stuff as we go. If you guys are playing the beta, chances are you do have the OP side impact pistol. I would recommend that on pretty much every class that you guys have. If you don't, any pistol is fine. Um, if you want to use overkill, go for that as well. It's completely up to you. Um, as for the tacticals and lethals, I'm a big flashbang guy. I think that flashes and stuns in this game are ridiculous. Even with battle hardened, they still have full effect. It just lasts shorter as opposed to the effects being negated entirely. So flashes and stuns are beyond OP. So make sure you guys have them on every class. Semtex always a staple in Call of Duty. You guys know the deal there. Now, another new iteration with Modern Warfare 2 are these things called perk packages. Now you guys kind of saw or it's been explained to specialists which is pretty apt i would say um and these are perks that you unlock early middle and late game of your you know whatever map you're playing so your base perks are the perks that you spawn in with um your earned in match perks obviously are the ones that you earn in the match the middle one is probably the most important here i would say uh your middle and end game perks just are the ones that really transform how you play. Uh, quick Fix is crazy. 10 out of 10 would recommend on pretty much every class. Um, basically, it gives you health regen when you kill people. Uh, so you can just pretty much keep the pace up and keep moving as opposed to getting shot, healing, getting shot, healing. You can just keep moving uh, and the health regen is pretty much instant. Uh, let's go ahead and mess with this just a little bit so I can show you guys. So on subs, I'm going to run double time and battle hardened. Uh, battle hardened or EOD, something like that. You need battle hard, in my opinion. I'm telling you guys, the stuns and flashes are beyond overtuned right now. And if you just don't want to put your controller down when you get stunned or flashed, I need to recommend battle hard. And it's it's a must, in my opinion. And then before that, you can go maybe scavenger EOD. I like double time, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, as I mentioned, you can go with quick fix here. The other perks in the category are pretty underwhelming. Uh, I think the only thing here is fast hands that I would fully recommend. Um, cold blooded's okay. Resupply is like a no. Um, so I would stick with fast hands quick fix here if I had to pick. And then last but not least, we have the five end game perks here. The only things I would take here are ghost, hardline, and bird's eye. Bird's eye is essentially every time you get a UAV, it turns into an advanced UAV. It's a phenomenal perk. I would take this if I didn't want to use ghost because UAVs are pretty OD in this game because uh, they're super easy to earn. So if you're on high streaks or if you're trying to pub stomp, I would recommend ghost. Um, but bird's eye is a phenomenal perk. I, I couldn't recommend it enough as well. 
And then a hard line is basically the, the same perk that it's always been in COD. It's just uh, less score per kill streak, basically. So that is perks uh, explained. You guys can also save these and use these amongst different classes as well. It's not like a perk class kind of thing, um, which you can see here. I have his perk package one and two. So that is that. And moving on to our field upgrades. These are pretty much normal things that you guys have known in Call of Duty for a very, very long time. Uh, the two I would recommend here are Dead Silence because footsteps are just unbearable at the moment. Footsteps are crazy. Footsteps are pretty ridiculous, so I would recommend that. And then the other cool one that I actually don't hate the idea of is Battle Rage. Um, experimental stimulant that gives you an adrenaline rush, health regens quickly, tactical equipment is resisted, and tactical sprint is constantly refreshed. At face value, it sounds awesome. The only downside is it changes your FOV and it changes uh, kind of what your game looks like. And it's so bad to the point where I don't use it. Um, I have it on some classes like subs, but it, it basically you breathe into a gas mask and it just creates this field of like haze on your screen and it's pretty unbearable, I cannot lie. So Dead Silence has been the go-to for pretty much everything um, or trophies, whatever you guys prefer. But I'm, I've been sticking with Dead Silence for the most part. Moving into kill streaks, this is something that I want to tip my cap to Infinity Award for because typically in betas, most kill streaks are locked. You usually get like five, and that's it. They let us use everything in the game. Hats off to those guys. Love Infinity Award. So I have gone with the UAV, counter UAV, and advanced UAV. You guys can feel free to mess around with these. There are a couple things that I will say. However, the chopper gunner, I would stay away from entirely. You cannot move it. So if you get the chopper gunner and it's a map that sucks, you get, you get no kills. So that's why I kind of don't recommend it for the most part. Um, advanced UAV does what it always does. It just shows you directional mini map, which is the same thing as bird's eye. Keep that in mind. So if you would rather use bird's eye instead of advanced UAV, you can do that. Um, you have your VTOL jet, which is the exact same thing as like Black Ops 4, if you guys remember that. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. You guys can just feel free to mess around in here. Um, but I've always been a pub stomping guy, UAV, counter UAV, and advanced UAV. Alrighty, guys. Now that should be everything. I don't think that I missed anything. I think I got, I think I got to pretty much everything if I, if I do say so myself. So, um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll just scroll through and uh and do my best to answer them if i missed them in the video i explained settings classes all of the new things that came with the beta I gave you guys my favorite guns and loadouts for the guns um i think that's that's pretty much it for the most part so i appreciate you guys for watching as always hopefully this is uh the start of my resurgence on youtube if not and mw2 sucks i'm gonna be very sad but uh, i don't love the game i don't hate the game as of the beta like i said it just came out it's day one so um still got a couple of days to change my opinion but as of as of right now it's just i think it's just mid i don't hate it like i said don't love it um but you know there's new things to be discovered as the game comes out competitive hasn't even started yet so we're getting pretty early stuff here um and you know we'll see we'll see where mw2 takes us so as always thank you guys so much for watching and uh, hopefully we'll get some more youtube content in the future you know we have the beta for a couple of days so i'm gonna be uploading as much as i can but um, if you guys have any questions, hopefully I answered them in this video. If not, like I said, leave them in the comments and uh, recommend this video to your friends. If there's any anything in here that you guys are unaware of or don't know, then um, hopefully I answered it. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day.